Okay, I'm going to give a really quick rundown of the BICEP language in just a few minutes. Um, starting from the top, lines 1 to 8 all are parameters. They are just like uh, ARM template parameters they compile into uh, ARM template parameters. I can use secure strings just like I'm used to in ARM templates. I can set default values, in this case setting the, the resource group location as the default value for the location. Um, <clears throat> again, same capabilities from ARM templates, but hopefully just a, a more uh, human readable syntax that's easier to work with. On line 10, we have something new uh, for BICEP called modules. This capability doesn't exist in ARM templates. And a module is a pointer to another BICEP file. It can contain uh, resource definitions. It can also contain pointers to other modules. It's just a, another BICEP file. In this case, I'm pointing to a local BICEP file. So here's webapp.bicep right here. But this could also point to a remote BICEP file or a, a registry. Um, modules have a name property and then a set of parameters. So these are all the parameters that are exposed by the uh, BICEP file itself. If I go look at the BICEP file, I can see um, that it looks just like another BICEP file. It has these parameters and we can see some of them have default values, some of them do not, which makes them required. Um, and the BICEP uh, language service will understand that they're required when you're declaring a module. Um, on line nine, we have our first uh, kind of regular resource that we're used to from ARM templates. So resources have identifiers, this one's called site, and then uh, the type of the resource, which is both the resource type and the API version combined into a single string, which collectively represents what this resource can look like. And so based on that type and API version, I have a set of properties that I need to fill out. And this is exactly what I need in ARM templates. This is exactly what I need uh, if I call the API directly. And this is where we are uh, a transparent abstraction of Azure. We want you to be able to work with the APIs uh, as they were designed. Um, and you can see I have some simplified things like string interpolation. You don't need to use the concat function anymore. I have uh, references to, to parameters and variables. I don't need the parameters and variables function. Um, on line uh, 34, where I need the server farm ID, where I'm used to writing uh, like the resource ID function, um, I can just call the resources identifier uh, or symbolic name, which for the server farm is called farm. And I can just do dot ID, um, and it knows to construct the resource ID function when it transpiles into an ARM template. Um, I have another resource here with the server farm, and then I have an output, which is the website's ID. If I go back to the main dot bicep file, I have another module pointing to a, a, a data tier in this case. So this is going to uh, deploy a SQL server in DB. And in this case, it's already valid, but let's see what happens if I delete one of these uh, fields that are required. Um, BICEP immediately understands that, hey, you're missing a required property, the DB name. And if I uh, do control space, I can get IntelliSense, just like I would expect in any other language. And it knows that DB name and location are valid parameters. DB name is the only one that's required. So we'll just say LFA DB again. Um, and then I can also declare uh, regular resources in my main file. So in this case, I'm doing a role assignment. I have a couple variables here, and I'm referencing those variables um, to construct the, the properties for this role assignment. And then when I'm ready, uh, all I need to do is the bicep builds command and point it to my main.bicep file. And when I do that, it's going to take that bicep file resolve all the dependencies to the other BICEP files and uh, output or transpile a, a, a large JSON file that you hopefully don't need to worry about um, because uh, you're only using this to deploy, you're not using this to author anymore. And this can be used through all the standard ARM deployment tooling. You can uh, deploy with the CLI with this or the portal, you can call what if, you can run the TTK against it. Um, so it's just a regular ARM template at the end of the day. Um, so this was just a really, really quick overview. We have lots of resources available in our, our channel, and we're open to, to take any other questions or, or separate out into one-on-one -on -one breakout rooms. Thanks.